Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Watch with Dennis back at the regularly scheduled time. I obviously am Dennis, and we are going to go over four new watch reveals that have happened over the last week or so. Uh, I didn't really go back two weeks uh, because I did end up having a live stream last Saturday. It was just earlier than normal. So for those that, that didn't catch it, I will post a, a link in the chat, even though you could probably just find it anyway. But I was in Dallas for the Texas Pinball Festival and took that opportunity with Tony, who's been on uh, this uh, stream several times. He does the Eclectic Gamers podcast with me where we cover pinball and gaming. <clears throat> and so we hit some of the watch uh, boutiques and uh, dealers that we don't have in Kansas City, like Zenith, Vacheron, AP. And so we talk about those experiences over on that live stream. So anyway, it was a lot of fun to finally get a chance to handle some of those watches that I just don't ever see around here in Kansas City. And so I won't be recounting all of that here. You can always just go back and watch that. Now, my voice is not perfect. <laughs> it's never perfect, but you probably are noticing my voice is a little uh, fry-y. Uh, <clears throat> not unusual for me after a convention. I did not feel well when I was driving back on Sunday. I don't know. Uh, I'll assume a cold or just my sinuses because everything is much more in bloom down there. But it's just been just general sinus drainage. I've done three COVID tests. It's not COVID. And again, I'm not having any other symptoms. But my voice was terrible on Wednesday. I lost my voice on Wednesday. I was actually supposed to do a live stream over on Flipping Out Pinball to talk about the Texas Pinball Festival. I had to cancel. I was like, no one's going to want to hear this voice like this. So, I mean, I was able to get sound out by the end of the day, but it was, it was bad. So I'm mostly recovered at this point, but there's still going to be some throat irritation. So it's just going to be a little rough. So I do apologize and feel free to not watch if you cannot stand how I sound, but we do have four, uh, reveals new releases that I wanted to go ahead and go over. A couple of these actually are going to be Actually, almost all of these are going to be pretty similar to watches that already exist. Though I think that's pretty much par for the course for a lot of what we see in the wristwatch hobby. So I don't know if we'll spend a ton of time on those, but obviously we do have the new Omega Swatch collaboration. That one is dramatically different looking by and large, given the dial configuration and the complication on the watch. So that'll be the third one we go ahead and hit. But we're also going to hit uh, the new uh, sizing on the Blancpain 50 Fathoms, which I think is probably the most exciting news for a lot of people. But we got a Breitling that we're going to go ahead and do, and we're going to open with some uh, Mr. Jones watch reveal that happened while uh, just a couple days ago, in fact. So that's what we're going to start with. Uh, on the wrist today is my Moser Pioneer Center Seconds. I finally, actually just yesterday, got the smaller strap. So you see this is not <laughs> like you're going to go back and check, but it's not overhanging <laughs> by seven inches or whatever. Uh, they do make a smaller strap. I had to order it from Bookerer out of California and they had to order it in. So uh, it actually came a lot faster than I expected. So I did the swap, you know, put the buckle on and all of that the other day. And so now it actually wears like a normal watch that is not uncomfortably flopping around, which was the main reason uh, I did not wear this a lot on the weekends. I don't wear it to work because it's way too domed to uh, to successfully wear, in my opinion. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and let's get started with all of the news because it is not interesting to talk about me. So we'll go ahead and start with Mr. Jones watches. And hey, I was talking about pinball and the Texas Pinball Festival. This watch as a design is very similar to a watch that has been out for a few years now from Mr. Jones, Ryan Claytor design. I actually do have a link in the, not in the show notes. I have a link to this article in the show notes in the video description, I should say. But uh, I do have a video on the channel if you want to go and check it out uh, with a couple of interviews, in fact, with the creator of this watch. One, when this watch, the first version of this watch came out and one when he had a new book, he's a comic book artist, uh, came out more recently a few, uh, a few months ago. But anyway, that's not what we're really going to focus on. This is a new iteration. It's the Ricochet XL. And there are a couple of changes with it. One, and the big thing is the sizing. It is a larger version of the Ricochet, a much larger version of the Ricochet. And we will get into that. But aesthetically, the dial is fairly similar to the original Ricochet. Um, the color, this purple color was what the background was on the limited edition. When Ricochet first dropped, it was a 100 unit run and it had kind of this purple backdrop. The regular production model, I believe is more of a turquoise or a light blue. 
So this is back towards the more LE version. This is not a limited run uh, model to my knowledge, at least not numbered. Um, and because the watch is bigger, this robot is a new addition. These three robots on the left were always represented on the dial. This uh, silver robot on the right is a new iteration, a new addition to this iteration of the watch because of the additional space that is provided. Now, you're probably going, what additional space, Dennis? And the answer to that is a lot of additional space. The original version of this watch is 37 millimeters in diameter. This watch is 45 millimeters. So it is massive. You notice the crown is relocated down here towards the four, traditional 430 position. This uses the same movement as the regular ricochet. So don't expect this to be more legible in the sense of timekeeping. I've done some side by sides. This is going to, the discs are the same size, which is understandable with the same movement. So there's more dial space, but there's not more space dedicated to the time telling because this uses a jump hour here in the middle of the dial. This hour marker on the back box display of the pinball machine jumps every hour when it hits the, the exact hour. And then this, where you see the 10, this is a rotating, constantly rotating disc uh, that functions as the minute hand and they're marked in five minute increments. So that's how it, the time telling works on it if you're, if you're kind of curious. So precise timekeeping was not possible with any iteration of this in the sense that you only see the marker every five minutes. I mean, it's moving, so you get a sense, but just be aware that that's all entirely the same. So if you had an issue with the old Ricochet being able to read it, this is not going to solve that. This solves the issue of people who felt 37 millimeters was too small of a watch. I am quite frankly surprised they went this big though. So obviously it gave the creator a lot more space to play around with on this watch, but this is a sizable watch. Close case back, so you won't notice that the movement is smaller other than obviously how the timekeeping is oriented towards the center of the dial. But you can see here on this uh, site, Mr. Watchmaster, which I've not used before, but had a nice tech spec summary uh, which is why I went ahead and threw it in the video description and I'm using it today as my linked example. 45 millimeters in diameter, 53 millimeter lug to lug. That is a very large watch. Um, I'm trying to think, I don't, I've never owned a watch that big. I, uh, I think my largest watch was about 52.25 maybe, or 52 and a half, which I think was my Tudor Black Bay bronze. I believe my, uh, my Portuguese I used to have from IWC wasn't even as big as the Tudor Black Bay, the original Tudor Black Bay bronze, the 43 millimeter version. This is larger. This is longer on the wrist than even that. So this is a very sizable watch. Obviously, it's got 22 millimeter strap width. So you'll be readily available options for third party straps if you want. But obviously running the, the larger end of those because 22 is basically your <laughs> your top end on regular sizing. And as I noted, the, the movement is the same as in the, the smaller edition of the watch, the TY2709. So uh, also the price point is, is pretty significant. Um, I think this runs around 800 US dollars, about 700 British pounds. So anyway, if your problem with Ricochet was that it was too small of a watch or you've tried other Mr. Jones watches and you were uncomfortable with them being so small, Go ahead and try this one out, uh, but this is this is definitely for big wrists. So, I mean, if I'm giving advice without having handled this watch myself, I obviously, once I saw the reveal, I didn't order it because I'm like, there's no way this watch is going to be an ideal size for me. As cool as having the additional robot is, a 37 millimeter is much more oriented towards my wrist, which is 6.75 inches. My general guidance would be, if your wrist is above average, which I think for men would be about 7.25 inches, I think it's probably safe to go ahead and consider getting the Ricochet XL. If you're under the 7.25, I would say look at the 37 millimeter and, and seriously consider if it's too small or not. Um, otherwise, maybe we'll see if they end up deciding to do a third iteration and finding a sweet spot in at you know, 42 millimeters or something, but they jumped real. I mean, XL is a very good description because they jumped very big into the sizing. So anyway, <clears throat> let's go ahead and move on to a, uh, a luxury brand, uh, Breitling. Uh, not one we've talked about in a while here on the channel. And there is a new release for the Breitling Aerospace, the B70 Orbiter watch. Now, the uh, having these aerospace watches, these have been out for a while. Uh, but this is a new iteration of it with a new movement. So I thought that was pretty interesting. We're going with the orange dial configuration. This is an analog digital watch. It is a high accuracy quartz. Breitling doesn't often get mentioned in discussions about high accuracy quartz, but they are actually a player in that space. It's not just 
uh, uh, Grand Seiko and and Citizen that are operating with a lot of uh, opportunities to acquire something in high accuracy on the court side of things. Um, but uh, this is a very big watch. It's actually bigger than the previous generation of the uh, aerospace. It is 43 millimeters in diameter, so smaller than the Ricochet we were just talking about. Still has 22 millimeter lug spacing, which you would expect. It is just under 13 millimeters thick, and the lug to lug is 52.25. So this is very much in line with what I just mentioned a little bit ago, the Tudor Black Bay Bronze Original, the 43 millimeter full size edition. So <clears throat> kind of think those specs if you've ever handled that watch. Though I'm not sure on the thick, I'm, the Tudor's probably thicker than this. But uh, does not have a close case back, which I think Breitling has always done close case back, close case backs on their quartz watches. But they've taken this is a kind of a celebration of this balloon that you see here. This the Orbiter three balloon that uh, went around the world like in one flight, and Breitling sponsored that. So you see that yo know, giant shiny balloon. So for whatever reason, they've done a sapphire display case back, and you get to look at the balloon. Through the case back, which is very shiny. Um, I don't get it, but I mean, I guess if you were excited about this balloon, you might like that. But anyway, uh, pricing is a little bit higher than the traditional aerospaces. Uh, the new movement, I do want to go ahead and point out, it's now all controllable through the crown to go into all the various settings and stuff. So, and you do have pushers on the sides to be able to activate certain features and stuff. Obviously, it's got a chronograph, for example, Google 99 hours, 99 minutes because of the digital displays has that full capability. So anyway, it is just under $5,000. It's it's 4,900 US if you want to go ahead and get it on the bracelet. And this is a titanium watch and the bracelet is titanium. If you want to go ahead and get the strap, you don't save a lot. You go down to 4,700 US dollars. So this is actually not listed as being a limited edition watch, <clears throat> which is a little surprising because at some point they're going to run out of balloon, right? I mean, look at that. I mean, it is a big balloon. You could probably make a lot of, I mean, do they have the whole balloon? If they have the whole balloon, I suppose they're probably like, we can basically make as many watches as we would ever sell before we would run out of that balloon. I, I'm sure practically speaking, that's plenty of balloon and that's why they didn't <laughs> list a uh, number, but there is a slight price premium for this version versus other aerospaces. But anyway, um, I just wanted to go ahead and, and point this one out because I think a lot of people are probably going to look at this and say, you know what, this is a this is a pretty interesting uh, watch. If you're into Swiss uh, high accuracy quartz, there's not a lot of players that come to my mind anymore that you can turn to without going vintage. And so it's a, I think it's a pretty good opportunity, but it is a larger watch as these uh, as these aerospaces tend to run. And this one's even bigger than normal. It will be light uh, because of the titanium case back, uh, excuse me, not titanium case back, sapphire case back. It will be light because the whole watch is titanium, including the bracelet option. Uh, smaller wrist people, though, just be aware. This is a this is a very sizable watch. Uh, I think that's a historic one. But um, I do like it with the orange. Uh, it's one of my, I don't own any orange dial watches anymore, but it is still one of my favorite watch uh, colorways, dial colors. I always think of it for um, for dive watches. Doxa has implanted that. And I got to give them full credit here because look at this. They didn't crop any of the numbers. That gets real close, but they were like, you know what? Dennis complained. I'm sure it's all me. They co he complained about the cropping on the B01 chronographs, like the pistachio and all that. Let's not crop this one. It's too big for him anyway, but let's not crop it. I, honestly, I could probably wear this. It'd be very close, but I I, I think I could pull it off. But I mean, it, it hangs over more than this than this Moser, uh, but it is about the size of the Black Bay Bronze, as I've noted. And I was able to wear that watch. I let it go for other reasons. But anyway, uh, I thought it was an interesting release and figured, you know what? Uh, it's a quartz watch, definitely worth talking about. So Koji says, very cool watch in terms of capability. Yes. Um, I've heard all sorts of really good things about these Annie Digi watches that Breitling does in particular, and they've got a they've got a few other things in that space that are that are really exciting for a lot of people. Uh, so anyway, yeah, it's not something I'm really in the market for, but I thought it was worth talking about. And uh, welcome, by the way, Koji, to the actual live stream. You're the first person to chat today. This is a a first. I've I've chosen a very dead day for a discussion, so hopefully people will uh, be able to catch the recording or. My voice is really that bad from recovering from my convention. And they're like, we cannot, we cannot listen to this guy today. <laughs> and maybe I'll be fully recovered by next week. 
But speaking of recovery, we got to talk about the big news. I would have, if my voice had not been destroyed on Wednesday, I would have done a first thoughts video on this, even though plenty of people have. And that is the new moon swatch. We, we got to talk about the new moon swatch. It's, it's impossible not, not to. In fact, this is a bit of a mouthful. So the Omega, uh, I would say X. I don't think most people just talk about it as a collaboration, but the, the Omega, the Omega swatch moon swatch mission to the moon phase. <sighs> that is a mouthful, but Hey, they actually changed something up here. So what is it? It's every year. I we're going to see this every year. I think swatch has got to do a new moon swatch. Are we going to see a new Blanc pond collab mix up this year? I, maybe not. I don't, I don't know that was successful enough, but we got people love the moon watch. People love the price point of swatch. We got to do uh, a cross collaboration. So, What's the big moon watch that everyone loves? It's the Snoopy, the silver Snoopy edition or some of the other historic Snoopies. People love Snoopy. I, I don't know why. Actually, I, I kind of love Snoopy too, even though I'm not like a huge Peanuts fan. Like I watched the, you know, the Great Pumpkin and all that growing up and the Thanksgiving and all of those. So I, and I remember reading Peanuts. It was still in the, in the newspaper when I was a kid. So like it was still being written by Schultz. So, I mean, I, I'm not what I call myself a Peanuts fan, but like, I still think about like the silver, like that's the one moon, the moon watch style uh, Speedmaster that I like is the one with Snoopy on the back of the dial, um, you know, going around on a little rocket and all of that. So anyway, uh, so that's what they've done here. Now they didn't put him on a rocket on the back. They didn't put him on a rocket at all. They put him on the dial, which I mean, he's on the dial of the, of the silver Snoopy and all of that as well. But Obviously, there's been a big history with Omega and Snoopy, so Swatch had to get their fingers into that and start to appreciate it. So what they've done is at the three o'clock subdial position, they took out the feature from the other moon watches and instead put in a moon face. So you see the 29 and a half, the markings for all of that it is a functioning moon face. So when I first saw this, I thought it would just be like a day night indicator or something and not actually go full moon face. But they have full moon faced it. Granted, it is a quartz watch, so probably not the hardest thing to achieve. Um, sizing is very similar to the regular uh, moon swatches. It's thicker. It's thirty. It's 13.75 millimeters thick. That's not particularly thick, especially for a chronograph. So that's fine. Uh, but it's still the 42 millimeters in diameter, 47.3 millimeters lug to lug. So most wrists will be able to pull this watch off. Um, so... In terms of uh, that thickness, the other ones were still over 13 millimeters. I think it's only half a millimeter thicker. Instead of the photorealistic battery cover, you have this cartoon battery cover of the moon as a sketch with a little Snoopy, well, actually a very big Snoopy footprint on it. So, so they've changed that up a little bit. And obviously the watch is very cartoonified. Now, um, I don't know where from the strip this quote is, but this is a quote from the strip. So under... Under night conditions, you have the green loom for the markers and the hands, and then the moon face, the stars and the moon that Snoopy is on, is in blue. And then this hidden text quote from the strip, I can't sleep without a nightlight, shows up as well. So that's a fun little Easter egg. Um, reminds me of Omega when they did the, the depth of the trench on their super deep watch, kind of that playfulness. That's what this reminds me of. Uh, I think it's more fitting on this watch than that watch. But again... Uh, I think that watch, it was only under UV light that you would see this. Actually, this, so I think this glows and you don't have to just glow it under UV light, but maybe it is. This says moon face indicator in UV reactive ink, but so maybe I'm wrong on that. Maybe it only shows when it's under UV, but I assumed it glowed. I don't know. We only have the one photo, but anyway, uh, 310 US dollars. It's powered by who knows what sort of probably ETA based given Swatch owns ETA and Swatch owns Swatch and Swatch owns Omega. Um, so uh, price wise, this is not way out of line with the other moon swatches. Um, I think reaction by and large, I have not read a lot of commentary on articles. I've read uh, two articles about this watch. So again, I was busy getting caught up with work for my, my Texas vacation. So, um, but by and large, people seem pretty positive on this, more positive than I thought they would be. I thought, I don't love this. So let me give my opinion real quick, since that's why I assume you're here. Um, it's okay. I like the moon phase. I like the playfulness. I don't like the color white. Uh, and maybe the thought was, hey, we are going to have this new white uh, moon watch. You know, that was the big news from a couple weeks ago from Omega. 
so let's do this all white with a bunch of black text. But I just, I find it extremely boring in this configuration. I just, I find it kind of like my problem with a regular Moonwatch in the black. It just, it's really understated in a way that just doesn't work for me. And I like a lot of understated watches. So I know there's a bit of hypocrisy to that. This, I don't know. It's just, it's so devoid of color. I just, it just doesn't really work for me. I think this would, I would have liked this better in black with the other elements in white or something, more of a panda dial approach or some or a reverse panda or just something. It's just a, it's just too white for me. So I mean, it looks fine. Um, I think this is going to do well, very well, very, very well, uh, simply because of the, the Snoopy fun Easter egg. I think people will appreciate the moon face more than the chronograph functions on this sort of watch anyway. Obviously it's still a functional chronograph too. So, I mean, let's not lose sight of that. It's just, it's the way it works here. I think a lot of people are going to like it. Um, I mean, I don't like how the, you know, the font mixes and stuff like Speedmaster, And then we've got the moon swatch over on the right and the different font, but these complaints were applicable to other versions as well. So, yeah, I mean, it's fine. I, I don't really love it, but, uh, I think it's definitely going to uh, do very, very, very well for a swatch. Um, I think way better than those uh, strawberry moon, full moon, gold plated, seconds hand nonsense things they were doing. This at least looks different. So while I wished it was maybe more colorful or another color just in general, I think it'll do quite well for them. But what do you all think? Scott, welcome to live stream. And thank you also, you and Koji both for being 99 cent club members. Uh, Brightling, we were talking about earlier, we're talking about the new aerospace. Uh, Brightling gets a lot of hype, perhaps too much for me. Well, you may be right, Scott. I, I've looked at Brightling. I was really seriously considering a Brightling Navitimer last year. I never pulled the trigger, uh, which is probably for the best because at this point, I don't know if I would wear it enough because since I wear dress watches to work so much now with my new job, um, I, I have to, you know, reevaluate it, the sports watches that I might get. So I'm glad I didn't because I'm looking more at, at dress watches at this point, um, which has always been my bias anyway. Like I just prefer dress watches in general. In fact, I've thought about just sort of consolidating down more of my, um, more of my sports watches, maybe doing a trade, you know, getting something used from like a watch finder or something. Uh, that's another dress watch and and kind of maybe letting the Omega go, letting the Oris go. The new Titanium Citizen I've got is the same. You know, I still have that titaniumness that I'm getting from the Oris. And that one I don't have to set because it's a, it's a high accuracy quartz. So I've been wearing that one a lot. Finally displacing that Oris. The Oris is a very cool design though. So it's tough. Maybe I should just keep them all in and just spend more money. But, you know, I hate spending money. So, which is you know, hobbies and money are kind of tied together. So it's always tough. Uh, Neff, I made it. I was dealing with clogged sink. Hello. Well, hello, Neff. Uh, that, you know, it was quiet here for a while, but I, I keep going. People can always watch the recording. That's what I tell myself. Uh, so thank you for joining though. And thank you for, uh, being a 99 cent club member. I always like to provide that appreciation. Neff says, or asks, did I miss the big money Blanc Pond 55? No, I'm ending with that. We're on the third of the four watches. We did Mr. Jones Ricochet and we did the Brightling Aerospace. And we're just now wrapping up the, um, moon, mission to the moon phase, which is a weird mouthfully phrase to, to say something. on. So no, you have not missed Blanc. I saved my favorite for last. So Koji says, yes, Dennis, join the dress watch snob club. Well, okay. I can't just have dress watches, Koji. Even I have t-shirt days. Even I have to have to go and work in the yard. Even I, I don't have a lawn service. I mow my own yard. I, I go, I still change my own oil. I do I'm I'm very plebe in a lot of ways. Don't don't let the Parmigiani fool you. Uh, I still feel I every time I look at stuff, I'm like, is it worth this? Do I want to spend the money or is the headache worth me doing the project myself? So I still do uh, I do a lot of that. That's my that's just how I always always was growing up. So so that's how I am. So I still need my G Shock. I still need some sports watches, but. But I do admit, Koji, the the snobbery of of looking and going. You know what? Wouldn't I rather just have a 30 meter water resistance gold watch and be like, yeah, I kind of do. I kind of wish that. So, so I am, I'm skewing that way more and more. I'm not proud of it. It's just, it's just the way it is with the collection. Neff is not helping matters here with, you definitely need another dress watch with the Omega and Oris gone. That gets you 5k closer to an 1860. Uh, if only they were easy to obtain Neff. 
Um, a, a used one, sure, but the Lucent Steel one's very, very difficult. Uh, DP, welcome to the live stream, uh, by the way. Uh, congrats on the 3,000 square. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I add about 1,000 a year is kind of my pace. A little, I, I go a little faster now. It's a, it takes a little bit. Every 1,000 is a little, I say like I've got like 10,000, has been a little bit faster. Um, I'll probably, fingers crossed, pick up a few people during Watches and Wonders because uh, that's the big news cycle. And then usually the way it's worked is I'll have one, maybe two first reaction videos that do really well. And then the rest of them are really niche. And some of you like that, that other people don't care about, like Parmigiani, for example. I, if they do something new, I'll, I usually feel compelled to do a video. That's not a brand people are really excited about, but it's a brand I like to talk about because I think they're, they're interesting. Even when they do designs I don't like, they're interesting because let's be frank, they do a lot of, or at least historically, they did a lot of avant-garde stuff that does not work for me. And my Parmigiani watch, I know, did not work for a lot of you. It was just a little too weird in the dial configuration. So, but that's part of the fun because uh, it's just a hobby. I have a, I have a day job <laughs> that pays for the watches and uh, pays for me. So I don't, this is just, this is just to have fun, but, but I appreciate it. So thank you. Neff says, I wore an Aquas to unclog the sink. Need 300 meters of water resistance. Sports watches are a must. You must have, I wonder if that was a kitchen sink if you were, unless you were going underneath to do the unclogging. I actually have almost like a full set of, pl of plumbing uh, wrenches and everything. Like I've done the fixtures. I've changed out the O-rings. I've done, we're turning to plumbing with Dennis. I've done the toilets. I've installed toilets. Uh, I've uh, you know put in the shower stuff. Uh, I've not done like a full remodel. I, I paid, I hired that out, but I had leaking, you know, stuff all over the place and and would go ahead and do shower sinks, clogs, um, all of it, all of it. I When my sister bought her house, uh, I actually went and did their uh, kitchen sink uh, plumbing. I still remember this is this uh, probably need to put the the not safe for work tag. I won't swear, but uh, going under the sink and doing the twisting and the gunk that was clogged was dripping onto my face. Uh, so I've I've done the full fledged. Uh, I don't do that much, uh, that much anymore. That's for my own sinks at this point. But yeah, uh, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, uh, definitely, definitely. It's uh, homeowning is an experience. I'll, I'll tell you. Uh, Scott, welcome to live stream, and thank you. Oh, well, you've already welcomed you. You brought up the bright lane earlier. Names are blending together. 1860 is beautiful, but expensive for steel. No, yes, it is. It's about twenty five thousand U.S. dollars for the new Lucent Steel Edition. Honestly, I would rather have it. I, it looks really good. Let me be fair, but I've only seen it in photos. I did in Dallas go the place that was a Zenith dealer uh, was in the Gallian uh, or Galleria Dallas is the mall where it was. It was the Bookendorf's. Um, the Zenith dealer is also a Chopard dealer. Uh, they did not have any of the 1860s, but it's so in demand is why uh, I would probably be inclined to get it in white gold if they come out with a white gold version, because I don't imagine it's going to cost any more. The Lucent Steel is very, very cool, but you are right, Scott. For steel, it's very, very high. So you have to ask yourself, what are you paying for? Like, could you get it in a precious metal at the same price? Arguably, yes. Are you paying for other things that would justify the price? Sure. I mean, it is a Geneva Seal movement that they use in that watch, which a lot of the, the I don't think any of the historic 1860s are Geneva Seal movements. So if that matters to you, uh, like um, like Bill over in Watch Art Sai, he would probably greatly favor the Geneva seal on the movement. Uh, that might be enough to justify at least a portion of that premium. But one of the things to bear in mind is we don't get enough gold in a lot of these watches to really the. I heard an argument on the on the blog to watch podcast about the um, where all the like in the supply chain and stuff why the cost of gold is so much more than just the raw value of the gold. But in the end, all we own as collectors is the raw value of the precious metal. So, so there's not there wouldn't be a lot of precious metal in such a gold watch because it wouldn't come on a gold bracelet. It's sort of where I'm going at. Kind of rambling, but Koji says yes, a special steel I think akin to that of surgical tools. Well, you know, three sixteen L is called surgical grade steel because that's what a lot of surgical tools are in. I'm not quite sure what they do for the lucent. What makes it different? But, um, but. I'm not, I have to look into it. It's been too long. Anson, welcome to live stream, Anson. And I like your, I'm not sure what your image is. At first, I thought it was like a, a fossil, which I was going to say was very cool. But honestly, it's too zoomed out for me to be able to tell. But that's not what we're talking about. It's not fossils with Dennis. 
Did I hear right that not all of the Swatch boutiques will stock the Snoopy? So more limited initial availability. You know what? I am not certain. I knew it was in-person only. Let's jump over to the article and see where it says. $310. Slightly more expensive. Yes, yes. But but yes, I know it's more affordable than the Omega. We're not, we're not stupid. We know that. Um, more to come. Some more models. Maybe some with colorways that I would like. Where does it say? Maybe they didn't say where if it was limited more or not. I assumed it was at all of the the flagship boutiques at least. Maybe that's what you mean is because that's how it was originally, right? When the moon moon swatches dropped, they were just in the flagships. Um, we'll have to do a check. It's actually not for sale yet. It's on the twenty sixth of March, twenty twenty four. Mission to moon phase. Where to buy? All uh, right. I do not. Does it say on the Swatch website? This is, a, I know this is very exciting. Dennis is surfing without you seeing what he's surfing at. So you don't have to see all the Googling because I'm trying to be merciful to you. All right. Let me click the see source here from Swatch's site. No, Swatch, you don't get to. All right. When I clicked see stores, it just, it showed up all of these places. So maybe these places, or maybe this is just where, so yeah, this is where I'm going to guess you can get it. So you probably did here, right, Anson? Sorry. I, I live here in Kansas City, so. Because I had someone ask me if I was going to go and uh, check out the new uh, Moon Swatch when I was down in Dallas. And I was like, it's not coming out in time to be able to do that. So the answer is no, I was I did not get to go see it. Uh, otherwise, I probably would have gone ahead and made the extra effort, but it is what it is. So anyway, uh, we only have one final watch to jump to. It is the one, Neff, that you wanted uh, to see. I saved my favorite for last because to me, this is the most. I know a lot of people love the, the Moon Swatches, and I totally get it. It's affordable. It's unique. Uh, it reminds you of a very, very popular watch, a more popular watch than this. But this is like what everyone has been pleading for for years. Blanc Pond finally has taken their mainline design 50 Fathoms and put it out in a 42 millimeter collection at last. This watch, for those that don't know, they have done limited editions of the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms that have been smaller, like 40 millimeters even, for example. But Forever in a day, it feels like the Blanc Pond 50 Fathom with this 36912 dial configuration has been a 45 millimeter collection watch when you don't talk about the limited editions. And it is just too big for people. It's too big for a lot of people. It is so big. I have never even contemplated looking at finding one. If you wanted a smaller one, you had to go to the Bathyscap design. Now, I like the Bathyscap design, but a lot of people don't. It's too vintage. It's too elegant. They don't like the little. Uh, dial indices that look a bit like nipples. There's a lot of stuff about the design that's polarizing. So people like this one, the more industrial looking design, but that was 45 millimeters. Bathyscap, what, 43, or you could go down to 38 even, I think. So here you go. They have now finally mainline, these are not limited, mainline collection. They have released several of these time plus date versions. Now, None of them are in steel, though, so there's still, so there's still going to be an issue. You have two choices. You have I mean, you have multiple dial choices, but you have two choices. You can either go titanium, or you can go rose gold, or what they call red gold. So it might be a little more red than the usual rose. But I'm probably going to keep calling it rose gold. So those are your choices. Grade twenty three is the titanium, by the way. It's not grade five or grade uh, what three, two. I I forget. I forget my grades, guys. There are a lot of grades of titanium. Um, but yeah, so those are your choices. So the diameter is actually, it's not exactly 42 millimeters, maybe not particularly shocking. So it's 42.3 millimeters. Um, that is three millimeters smaller though. Uh, it's thinner now. They, they got it down to 14.2 millimeters. So it is, I mean, this is a dive watch. So, but understand it is, it is thick. Um, but it, that's over a millimeter thinner than it used to be. Um, and I mean, otherwise, it's the same design that you might like. Sapphire crystal, 300 meters of water resistance, polarizing 430 uh, date window. Um, but I mean, that is to be expected uh, given that. Display case back, 
like um like we're used to with your with your gold rotor which uh, i think they do 18 karat gold on the rotor regardless of what metal you get it in obviously we're looking at an 18 karat gold uh i was gonna say rose well i'll say rose gold red gold uh case here um so i mean it's it's the design there's there's not it's the design but smaller it's what everyone has been asking for. Now, I think everyone actually has been asking for this to also be available in steel. Block Pond likes to play in metal a bit. Uh, they offer uh, ceramic versions, like the Bathy Scaffs available in ceramic. Obviously, gold is not something foreign to them. Uh, titanium, steel, the price is all over the board here, but it's all expensive. So you can kind of see here on uh, Monochrome's website. And again, video description has a link to every article I have used today in the video. But... Uh, starting at 15,300 Swiss francs, that would be for titanium on strap. If you want it titanium with titanium bracelet, you need to add about what 2,500 Swiss francs, 17,800. And you need to add 10,000 on top of that, 28,500 Swiss francs, if you actually want the gold cased version. So it is a very expensive watch. And Blancpain retail has always been very expensive. All of their watches, I think, are quite bluntly too expensive. I would definitely. Uh, look for this gray. It will go gray. I'm very confident of that. All of Blancpain's collection has gone gray. The uh, Swatch collaboration did not change that. Um, and so Joma Shop, for example, you can readily find all sorts of uh, versions. Now, granted, I need a caveat that that I've mostly been looking in the Bathyscap range of the 50 Fathoms because that was always the sizing. I wouldn't go up to 45. My biggest watch is a 44 millimeter. I will. I even if I could, even if it wouldn't overhang, it's just, that's pushing it. This is a 43 with a 51 point whatever lug to lug. And I'm I'm not overhanging, but it's like, do I really want to add another millimeter? No, not really. Um, so, so that's kind of, that's kind of uh, the, the place I'm at with it. But I mean, compared to some of the competition in this, I mean, it is a high-end watch. Let's go to some of the photos. Uh, I mean, there's significant movement finishing, you know, uh, on these, I think a lot of times people only think about uh, Breguet with movement finishing when it comes to the Swatch group because, yes, Omega's got movement finishing, but by and large, it's, you know, for most of the sports stuff, it's it's machine finished and all that. But there's beveling. You can, I hope I've zoomed in enough so you can see that, like, we've got beveling here on these movements. Uh, there's uh, radial brushing, and it's not a simple radial. This is like a spiral pinwheel radial brush here on... I'm going to guess that this is the ratchet wheel. So this is the crown wheel over here. It's also radial brushed. So my point is they actually do some pretty high-end finishing. It's the most high-end finishing I can think of in a regular dive watch uh, collection, you know, not going into some really elite stuff. So uh, in that regard, you are, there is, there is work being put into this. So I understand in a way where they're getting at on the price point. I'm just, all I can tell you is it's Blanc Pond. And Swatch owns them. They overproduce these watches in general, and they become available. Uh, I actually like how this gold looks quite a bit. I've never really considered a gold dive watch. Um, I think the titanium, though, would feel really good with the uh, the smaller sizing coupled with how light titanium is. Now, I've never handled grade 23 titanium, but I'm sure its weight properties are very similar to the other titaniums that we are all familiar with in the wristwatch space. I actually like the dial configuration quite a bit. I never really considered this, uh, this look, but again, because of the sizing, but it's like thinking sports watch style, this achieves a lot more than I think the Bathy Scap does. The Bathy Scap, I feel is more, if you want to wear a dive watch and you plan to wear a suit most of the time, I think the Bathy Scap is definitely worth looking into for its dial configuration. And it's got a lot of vintage uh, vibe to it, but this is a, I think this is much more sporty. And so given that, if that's your, your more appeal, I think this, I think this, I think this helps. I think Blanc uh, Pond actually, while I do believe this will go gray, um, I think it'll be slower than normal. They just, that 40, they stuck with that 45 for way too long. And I don't know if they were doing it because they knew they'd move their limited editions faster because they'd be like, here's a limited in 40. People can wear it. But this will be close enough where a lot of people We'll be able to wear it. They'll go. There are Seikos around this size. There's, you know, um, there's stuff. Rolex isn't too far off from this. I think this works really well for them. So I I saved this for last because even though I don't love the price point, how could you? We don't. Who wants to spend money, really? Um, that's just a smart move. 
It's such a smart move. Um, the only disappointment I really have with it is that they didn't drop steel with it at the same time. But I bet you within a year, there's a steel cased version of this because that's where the big sales will be, especially if it can shave a few thousand off of the price and it should be able to. But let me get caught up with what you guys think. Tuna, welcome to the live stream. And also, thank you for being a 99 cent club member. Greetings, Dennis. Tis a wet day in the UK. And here I am stuck in a crowded, crowded la laundriette. Still, I am with you in spirit. So as a laundriette where people wash clothes, is that a, a, a UK expression? We call them laundry mats. Uh, if that is what you are referring to uh, in the US, we call them laundry mats, which I used a laundry mat in college quite a bit. But I have my own uh, laundry place uh, in my house because that's what my laundry room is. Anson says, I guess you can't get the titanium Rolex yacht master. So the price of 18 K seems reasonable. That's a good point. Um, now the yacht master doesn't have as much depth rating though. It does have plenty of depth rating as I recall. Um, also, you know, that's a, that's an interesting, I hadn't really thought about it. Now yacht master is a, a grade five titanium, you know, proprietary named of course, because Rolex has to do that with everything. Um, yeah, I could see some people maybe thinking the Yacht Master that would turn to this. Um, uh, it's close to the uh second hand price though for Rolex Submariners and Steel. So maybe people might go, uh, maybe I'll get the titanium in this instead. It's a better finished movement, it's a better finished watch uh over the Submariner if the at this new sizing could be much more appealing. And maybe they like the idea of it being lighter because it's not steel, whereas the Submariner is is in steel and i guess we'll still see if i think they keep the submariner in steel this year at watches and wonders maybe the maybe the what the sea dweller goes titanium as well but i don't think they're going to make the sub titanium again blind guess i just think they sell enough of them in, in steel that that's what they're going to do but um but yeah a good a good comparison anson i do i do think the difficulty of getting rolex at retail still might compel some people to go here plus you might be able to negotiate if you don't want to wait for gray you might be able to negotiate discount on a blanc pond so we don't have a Blanc Pond dealer here in uh, Kansas City. I did not get to visit the Blanc Pond dealer in Dallas. There is one. I almost went there. Um, they're also the Parmigiani dealer. Uh, but I had already driven on the south part of the city, done the high-end boutique stuff, then went back up north, did like the Zenith and Chopard stuff. And then it was like, I'd have to drive back south. And I was like, it already been several hours of checking out watches. So my watch holiday was, uh, was, uh, far enough along that, um, that I was like, nah, I, I don't care enough to, uh, to look at anything there though. They did confirm they did have the Parmigiani, uh, PFs available, which I was kind of curious what the sizing would be on those. Neff, uh, says Blanc Pond's finishing is basically high horology finishing. It's exceptional. So, and that's where I would like to, uh, to have checked one out. Granted, this announcement wasn't out when I was down in Dallas. This came out after I got back. So yes, um, I've heard very, very good things. So, um, I, I think it's an exciting release. I being as cheap as I am, I would wait for a used or a gray market version because I think there very much will be, uh, there will be people that still think it's too big who buy it and are going to flip it, uh, get it out of their collection. Absolutely. Um, and there are others that might get one and then, you know, want to get the new when it's in steel or whatever, you know, mine's change, new dial colors come out. There's all, we all know watches, they're not limited. So we know there will be plenty eventually. So but I think it's a very exciting uh, release and um, I'm glad Blanc Pond finally did it. I had hoped that with the more 43 millimeter sizing with the Swatch collaboration, that they were wetting the appetite for people being like, Hey, remember us, this brand name, it's, it's back. You're like be there, brought it back. It's a cool design. I think it's all part of that strategy. And so I thought that the swatch release last year was a tease to get people into that side because they didn't do a 45 millimeter. And this is much closer to what the collaboration watches sizing was, but that's it. That's all I was going to do for today. Keep it a little short. My voice is still recovering from my illness. So I appreciate everyone who was able to come in and, and join. Um, uh, and I, oh, I see Neff has brought up. He wishes, wishes Blancpain would bring back the Le Mans. Uh, I have looked at a few of those. It's not been, um, I like their, uh, and they still make it. I think the Villaray. You want to think a more dress watch out of Blancpain? I mean, they do them. It's not just 50 fathoms. That's what everyone talks about, but they actually have some very nice watch designs beyond that, that kind of show off the horology a little more on the dial side. 
Anson says the local AD is always has them in stock. Smart. They did a tutor and having it available immediately. Yes, absolutely. Very, very intelligent move. Yeah, Blanc Pond is uh, is making the right choices lately, which is something we have not been able to say about them for a while, I think. And Koji, thank, telling everyone to take care. Yes, uh, I should be back next Saturday with another live stream. We'll see uh, what news will be coming up. We're getting very, very close to Watches and Wonders, so they're going to have a lot more fun things to talk about. Obviously, we'll have that huge rush, and then we'll be back to the normal pacing after after Watches uh, and Wonders. But I kind of get three weeks of material out of Watches and Wonders because it's, it's hard to talk about a lot of stuff and give it any attention without sort of spacing it out. But we'll have a lot of fun things, I think, to go over with um, at that point. But uh, thanks, everyone, who was able to tune in live. If you watch the recording, uh, I appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like. It'll help others find the recorded version of it. And I'll talk to you all in a week. And if I have anything in of where, relevance in the meantime, I'll, I'll do a, a pre-recorded video in between. But take care, everybody. Have a great weekend.